Hey y'all, it's Steven Van Camp and Lewis on April 23rd. And <clears throat> I'm back at Gene's greenhouse watering uh, what plants I have left here. They're mostly large ones. Um, but I have to admit, so, you know, sometimes I, I, I come here and, or just generally, I kind of, I don't really have a video idea in mind. I'm like, man, what am I going to, what am I going to talk about today? And as I'm kind of getting ready to load up some of these plants into uh, a, a, a bin over here, I'm looking at all these roots and I'm like, man, these, these roots look great. Um, so today, I think I'm going to talk to you a little bit about orchid roots and just generally um, show you some some really good examples actually of, of what they look like and, and what they're supposed to do and some potting <clears throat> uh, tips and advice and and some other things and then I'll show you some 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 Walkerianas and Nobiliores that Jean has that that uh, their roots are just rambling all over all over the metal bench and, and doing really nicely um, but let me let me get the the camera turned around and I'll uh, I'll show you what I mean. So first of all, I, I want to show you this this Ludemanniana here, and e even from this distance, you can see that the roots are all over the place. So I'm going to start out with kind of a cautionary tale, or maybe not necessarily a cautionary tale, but uh, you know, showing you what I don't like to see, um, despite all these roots. And basically, what has happened is this plant has walked out of its pot. For the most part, you can see there. Um, but these these roots look great, right? Um, this is kind of tough to do with a, a camera in one hand, or my, I should say my phone in one hand and, and a pot in the other. But you can see how great these roots look. But you know where they would look even better? Is inside the pot. So... I don't have the the correct growing conditions for for having a mounted plant. And, and I'm also a firm believer that if your plant does better on the outside of the pot than the inside of the pot, then you probably have a cultural problem that you need to address. Um, you know, and, and it's probably just something as simple as updating your, your orchid media to be more free draining or, or free flowing. Um, I don't have that problem. I have my my orchids do really nicely in the pots, and I mean this one actually is is not doing as nicely on the outside of the pot as it is typically on the inside of the pot. Um, and you can see some of the older growths here as this one approached the edge of the pot. Um, that's that's really the one of the larger growths, and then. You know, these are okay, but they've been getting smaller and smaller. And you can really see that over here. So <clears throat> my plants do best on the inside of the pot. Now that said, obviously having this plant on the outside here is my fault. You know, I just haven't gotten around to repotting it appropriately. And so now I have a huge problem, right? I have these massive this massive root system on the outside of the pot and I'm going to need to get it back in the side of the pot which means I'm going to have to rip it up and I'm going to have to destroy a lot of roots. So what I want to do probably is you know I need to figure out I don't want to repot now because the roots are looking so good although they are in active growth if I were to cut these off like here a lot of those would just regrow new new branching tips uh, which would be fine and then I have a new growth here coming in so that's gonna put out new roots at some point in the near future um, but you know it's 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 a ludomaniana these things are always growing uh, for, at least for me they don't really ever take a huge break so I, I could just bite the bullet and just tear up a bunch of roots and repot it and, and in fact that's probably what I should do um, I don't know. Anyway, I'll think about it some more and let y'all know what I end up doing. Um, on to another plant that is getting towards that same situation where it's crawling out of the pot. This is uh, Rhynchalalea glauca, which of course is Rhynchalalea digbiana's less famous cousin, although certainly 
this is a beautiful plant um, and a beautiful species that is is very well deserving of of notoriety of its own and it, it and it does have some of its own notoriety it has a lot of the same qualities of digbiana just without that giant frilly lip but you can see here so what I originally what I like to do is to take my pots and just drop them into larger pots and then then I don't have to disturb any of the back roots so you can see this is the old pot uh, I had actually cut off so this had cemented itself to the side of this pot and so I cut off the back part took all the media out and then dropped the whole thing into this new pot and I've cut divisions off this a bunch of times as it starts rambling over but I think what I'm gonna do now is is take this and drop this in another large pot and just let it continue to grow over the side um, but again you can see the roots here let me bring this back up over here and this makes me think about um, you know when you're in a nursery and you're looking at a, an unbloomed seedling uh, a, a plant that is alba or has is going to have white flowers is typically going to have bright green root tips like this. So if you see two seedlings next to each other, and this is being sold as let's say a, a rubra or a tipo or just something normal, and you see these white root tips, this is something different. This could be a really cool one, and this is the this is the type of one that I would snap that I would snap up uh, if I was looking at the root tips uh, looking for an unusual plant. Now conversely if you are looking at root tips that are all like this, this is Amethyst glossa, and you can see how differently colored the root tips are. So if you see two plants that are siblings, one with dark root tips like this, this is, gonna, this is indicative of a dark flower, and then you see one like this with green root tips. This is indicative of a, of a green or a white, something like that. So you, you would conceivably have, again, this is a hypothetical situation, which I've done many times in nurseries, uh, where you have siblings that are going to look very different in blooming. And so maybe it's, it's a really good idea to pick up one of each and, and see what happens with it. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please uh, click this little button down here on the bottom right. And uh, don't feel obligated to, but if you feel like this was worth a dollar or two, please, uh, please click that and add a dollar or two. Um, that will really go a long way to me helping to get a greenhouse right over here, as well as head over to Brazil for an orchid trip in 2024. So all of your orchid donations will go to orchid causes uh, for which I can make additional videos. And as always, thank you very much. So again, this is, this is Amethyst Aglossa. You can see I'm looking, looking up at it here. Um, that's uh, my blooming Maxima Con color just for uh, size reference. This is the Amethyst Aglossa, a, a typical or a typo sized one. But this is crawling out of the pot, so this is too late to repot. It absolutely drives me nuts when I see orchid growers or people giving advice online saying, oh, wait till your root tips are one or two inches long and then repot. No, 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 no. That, that is a terrible idea. When your root tips are this long, that's almost too late. This is definitely too late. You want to get the root tips... You want to repot when your root tips are smaller than this little nub in here. So in what you can see here is a, a new growth popping out. So this is too late. I'm not going to repot this one. Um, maybe next year I'll chop it up because it is getting absurdly large. But you can see it's got active root growth uh, from several different leads. So that just just something to think about when you are repotting or thinking about repotting. You know, ideally, this is your 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 best case scenario, where your roots are coming out the bottom here. They're all inside the pot. They're nicely contained, um, and and you know that's that's what you're kind of aiming for. 
Now with Maxima, that's kind of difficult because each growth tends to be a little higher up than the last ones. So these guys, even if they're not walking out of their pot, they're walking away from the pot and it's, it's, it can be maddening. In fact, you can kind of see that habit happening here. And then if, uh, if this had multiple leads, it would just be, it kind of ends up spiraling up on itself. Not quite as bad as let's say, um, the coconut orchid whose name I'm forgetting, but I'll, I'll put the, the name here in the video, that thing just walks out of the pot and just keeps growing straight up. So it's, it's not quite as bad as that, but it is still irritating. Another thing that's worth noting is that there's a lot of orchids out there that have these aerial roots. And you can see this is Ancelia africana. Um, and the the new roots that are below the media tend to be much thicker than these little aerial roots. I don't know, there we go. So you can see how thin these roots are. And actually, what I'll do here is show you this little ancelia that's next to it. This is it's a little smaller, but these roots are are the thick ones that should be on the inside of the pot. Whereas these are the thin aerial roots. Um, here, let's do this. Snap off one of these old roots, and, and you can see how you can see that there's a, a major difference in thickness. <clears throat> now, this is a species that, regardless of its color, I don't believe the root tips change. Um, so you won't really get any indication of what the flowers will look like on a plant like this. On this to on this particular species. Um, so if you see something, so you're, you're not gonna see like dark root tips with a bunch of siblings in a nursery next to one another, right? They're, all the root tips are gonna be these, this light green with the long, the long white here. So it, the, the root tip trick to picking seedlings doesn't work for all groups of orchids, but it does work for cattleyas. Um, so definitely, definitely think about that next time you're at a nursery looking at a bunch of unbloomed seedlings. You can get an idea of what you're looking at before you actually buy it. <clears throat> Finally, you can see what roots that are not inside the pot look like. So if you are in a a, a greenhouse like this where the humidity is high all the time, you know, a lot of your plants can do really well growing outside their pots. They don't need to be inside the pots. And so these are genes, Walkerianas and Nobiliores, and you can see that they're gripping the metal bench and they're doing just fine. Um, these ones are just hanging in the air like you would see aerial roots on Vandas, for example. A lot of the Florida growers grow their Vandas just with the roots hanging down. And then of course we see here what what these guys are trying to do really in, in nature is is crawl along the the tree branches and they get their their root tip into these wedges and then they create new cells that slowly expand into these wedges and and, and hang on very tightly and so so there is there is of course a photosynthesis component to orchid roots they can and do photosynthesize when they're um when they're exposed to the sunlight, the actual root is is that little, almost looks like a little wire. Here we go. Almost looks like a little wire on the inside of the root. So this is an old dried root here. This is the velamen that has dried up. This sort of sucks in the water and the nutrients. And then the actual root itself is this, this little skinny part in the middle that will actually send the water and the nutrients back towards the... Um, the plant itself for, for storage in the bulbs and, and just generally whatever the plant needs to use. Again, we can see some, some root tip coloration here. So this will be a typical or a typo. So that's a, a quick chat about orchid roots. Nothing particularly in depth, but hopefully some, some little tidbits in there that you can use um, when you're repotting or uh, not repotting as the case with the, the Ludamaniana and you know it, it's a 
orchid roots are, are kind of a topic that seem to be overlooked um, in, in a lot of time, including by myself. So uh, ho hopefully I can do more, more root focused videos like this and let you know the proper care for them and give you some tips and tricks. Anyway, have a great weekend. Bye.